This is the Sanat Kumara. Welcome, my dear students, to another lecture at Namas University about how Earth came into existence, the universe, and your place in it. I'm aware that the previous lecture left you with a lot of new insights to digest and work on. So I'm keeping it short this time. This universe is one in a sequence of many. There have been universes prior to this one and there will be universes after this one. And all of this in multiple dimensions simultaneously. Let's focus on our current universe first. The evolutionary pattern of progress is that each soul returns to the source and its incarnational experiences give it the possibility of moving up the dimensional ladder. So there will be a point in time when no more souls incarnate in the dense physical, the third dimension, where you currently gather experience. Eventually, there will also be no more human souls incarnating in the etheric, the fourth dimension. Each universe is the intentional, planned physical manifestation of a being in at least 24 dimensions. You can call the being Source, the Creator, the Creatress, Allah, God, Brahma, the Divine. Just take your pick. With the spark that forms the core of your soul, you are one with that Source and remain connected to it. And just to keep the picture complete, each individual soul has a vortex of energy that swirls about that spark and the vortex contains all experiences the soul has gained by sending out aspects of itself into incarnations in other dimensions. So the more layered and complex this vortex is, the more experienced the soul is. If you take a look at the pictures of souls in volume one of my chronicles, you can see what I'm talking about. The 24 dimensions of our universe can be distinguished as follows. The first and the second are below the frequency range of human souls, but, for example, inside the frequency range of Deva and Dragon Souls. The third dimension, the dense physical, is the lowest frequency at which individual human souls in this universe incarnate with an aspect to evolve. The fourth, the etheric plane, is where roughly 70% of all human souls in this universe evolve. This is followed by the fifth, the astral plane, the sixth, the concrete and abstract mental plane, the seventh, the intuitive plane, and the eighth, the spiritual plane, the place where your soul remains while you are currently out as an incarnated aspect. The ninth dimension is home to soul families, the tenths to soul neighborhoods and the elevenths to soul communities. Where the nines and tenths overlap, you find Shambhala's crystal city and where the elevenths and twelves intersect, you find Earth's actual evolutionary control center, the mothership. The 12th to the 23rd dimension form the space for higher group consciousness development, where groups merge into ever larger groups on the path of unity and return to the source. In the 24th dimension, source has its home. 
And in the 25th, and maybe above, even I don't know yet, source exists in between universes. When you incarnate on planet Earth in your dense physical body in the third dimension, where your five senses show you what seems to be reality, you have no recollection of your entire being in all dimensions from the fourth upwards to the eighth where your soul remains and to the ninth where your soul family has its home. But more importantly, you don't know your soul's mission. You can't remember all past lives with all its failures and successes. You don't recollect your cosmic resume. Due to the shift from the third through to the fifth dimension, this veil is thinning. You find it easier now to regress into past lives, tap into the Akashic records and get in touch with your soul or other soul family members. And that is most important. You need to learn and understand your soul's mission, both personal and planetary. You need to find these two purposes and do your utmost to fulfill them. Once you know, and even on the way to knowing a bit more every day of who you are, don't negotiate who you are. For who you are is the center of why you are here, forms the center of your personal and planetary mission, is needed by your soul to move on on its journey of return to the source together with your soul family into ever higher group consciousness. I am living in my second universe. And I can remember all my lives, because not all planets have this amnesia placed on incarnations as Earth does. My chronicles tell you how many years I already serve as the chief operating officer of Earth on behalf of Zongkriet, the great being that gives its soul to our planet. Let's look at how it all began, how Earth and later humans on Earth came to be. As a student in the undergraduate program of Namas University, you need to know the following. Scientists estimate that Earth is about 4.543 billion years old, plus or minus 50 million. This assumption is based on evidence from radiometric age dating of meteorite material. Scientists also estimate that our current universe is 13.7 billion years old. They conclude this by looking at the oldest stars they can detect and by measuring our universe rate of expansion. What they don't take into account so far is that our universe has 24 dimensions and that designing and building any planet takes place in dimensions 1 and 2, to which human beings have, in contrast to the devas, no access. But as you know by now, I'm a Deva being, and I have access to all 24 dimensions. So let's dive into Earth's history together for a short while, shall we? Every planet is the physical incarnation of a great planetary soul, also called great being. And as your human soul has a mission to fulfill during an incarnation, so has a great being that gives life to a planet. Such great beings invite kingdoms to form part of that physical planet in the making, and all who accept such an invitation 
have to agree to support the mission and objectives of that planet. Earth's soul Songcrete issued such an invitation and first came the Deva, the plant and mineral and of course the animal kingdom. They built the basics to support Earth and its mission. The mission of Earth is threefold. Firstly, it is to become the spiritual university planet of our galaxy, the Milky Way, and beyond. A communication bridge between the dense physical and the etheric physical, the third and the fourth dimension. But Earth is also a place for a second chance. A place where souls with bad experiences in the dense physical elsewhere, with slow progress or setbacks, can come and be given a second chance to turn around and start their way back to the source. Earth offers them the possibility to make a U-turn, so to speak, to try again with no regrets. Thirdly, Earth is a place that offers experimental learning for incarnated aspects of souls who have experienced most of their time in the etheric physical realm, in the fourth dimension. They can learn about the dense physical here firsthand and enlarge their collection of experiences. To put it differently, Earth is a place of meeting, learning and practicing, manifesting the qualities of Source in dimensions 3 and 4 and a place to take meaningful steps in unifying all that has been created. For Earth to fulfill its three purposes, it must have a hospitable and beautiful environment where those who incarnate here remember why they are here, build that environment and act as hosts to those who come here to study and exchange experiences. Earth is a place of learning, where third and fourth dimension incarnated aspects of souls meet and grow together. Earth existed in dimensions 1 and 2 at the beginning only. At that time, where it did not have a dense physical body as you know it today, the first human souls volunteered to incarnate and establish the foundation of the human kingdom of Earth. All of that happened in the inner planes, as we call them, the etheric, the astral and even higher dimensions. The first step was to develop dense physical body prototypes that could serve as vehicles of incarnation and then master these vehicles, meaning living in them. That took millions of years because of the imbalance of knowledge and the physical vehicle's limitations. Lemurian souls were the first who dared to enter these dense physical body prototypes. Many of these human souls manifested in water-land hybrid bodies. In the Lemurian time frame of Earth, dense physical bodies chosen by human souls became either water-land hybrids, or land dwellers only. In volume 1 of my chronicles, Lucia gets a more detailed insight into this difficult learning period in the human evolution on Earth when she is visiting the Council of the Sea. The successes achieved by the Lemurians enabled the entire human kingdom of Earth to move on into the Atlantean Age. In that age, the tasks were to connect with higher dimensions, anchor this connection permanently, and by that increase Earth's frequency, vibrations and energies constantly. That attempt failed. 
You call it the fall of Atlantis. Why did it fail? Because these higher dimensional frequencies, vibrations and energies were not linked to and harmonized with the existing ones on Earth. Harmonizing is a soft but steady process. And this process did not take place. In consequence, the ties with higher dimensions were more and more neglected and then cut off altogether. If you read through the stories of Greek mythology about the gods, the giants, the people, with what I have just told you in mind, you'll get more insights into what went on, right and wrong, during the time of Atlantis. Those of you who have already experienced many effective lives advancing the plan of your soul, soul family and the planet, we call mature souls. The term old souls does not say anything about the progress a soul has made. That is why I suggest that you focus on maturing rather than on getting older, also in your current incarnation. Mature souls express the qualities of source, of the divine. They care for others in ever-widening circles of concern and manifest concepts of unity and equality, both horizontally and vertically. That is all for today, my beloved students. Next week, I'll answer your questions of this month of February 2023. So be quick if there's something more you want to know. I will also answer the question I have asked you to figure out during the last lecture, namely who the seven ancestors in Volume 1, Chapter 1 of my Chronicles are and what they are referring to. As a bonus, I'll tell you how their work is interlinked to further expand your library of mind. Until then, feel my blessings and my love. This was the Sanat Kumara.